Jeffrey Cagle will be playing first base, was the starting pitcher, got 12 strikeouts, a new season high yesterday. And we are underway. Cassidy Curd, one of the best freshman pitchers in the country, gets the ball and she will be facing Mackenzie Pye Clark first. Miklish, who had such a big day wreaking havoc on the base paths in that nail biter, going having to go to extra innings to avoid what would have been a major upset. North Carolina played so well. Lily Backus was terrific in the circle, but Clemson survived to take on Duke and Cassidy Curd. And Curd in the circle in her 29th appearance, her 16th start on the season, has thrown 14 complete games. She stays up in the zone. We've seen her do that so far here with a lot of velocity, does not have a dependable changeup. So to attack her, you just need to time up that speed. Cassidy Curd with just one loss this entire season. It came in a midweek against Longwood. Mackenzie Clark has been dependable at the top of the order for coach John Rittman. Kelly Torres, a very good catcher behind the plate. Coming away with her first ever triple yes. in yesterday's matchup. She was so excited, loved interviewing her after the game to hear about how excited she was to be able to get all the way around to third on that hit to the outfield. She saves a lot of runners taking extra bases. By the way, she's able to field some errant pitches. Marissa Young, the head coach, calls the pitches. Clark goes upstairs, couldn't catch up on the 3-1 pitch. When we've seen Clark swing big in these games here at the end of the season, she is an all or nothing swinger, loves the ball up in the zone, and that's dangerous for her knowing that Curd loves to throw that rise ball. Full count. Goes upstairs, couldn't lay off it. First strikeout for Cassidy Curd. We'll take a look at this Clemson defense coming into this weekend. Fifth in the nation in fielding percentage. I'm sorry, this is a Duke, their lineup defensively. We'll talk about Clemson when they're in the field. How about that? <laughs> Anna Gold over there at third base. Vega at second. Jada Baker, the shortstop this year. And we already talked about Torres and her great job behind the plate. Natalie Miklish absolutely wreaking havoc on the base paths yesterday as Clemson couldn't get anything going offensively against Bacchus yesterday, but she used her wheels to help win that game. She is a grad transfer from the University of Wisconsin, a Stevens Point, Wisconsin native. RBI single and a double. Makes a third on the pass ball. Scored on a wild pitch to end the eighth inning and the ball game. Well, and it was aggressive base running by Miklish that actually secured that win without her advancements on the balls in the dirt. That game doesn't end, and we could still be here the way yeah. that both Cagle and Backus were throwing in that matchup yesterday. Heartbreaking end to the season for North Carolina. Now the one-two. When you mentioned Miklish, a transfer coming over from Wisconsin this season to Clemson. She transferred for the right reasons, according to John Rittman. He said she did her homework on Clemson and has come in to help anchor the outfield, a position that Coach Rittman thought was a little bit underdeveloped and now some veteran leadership out there with the transfer. Nicholas playing in the outfield. They also got Caroline Jacobson, who is a Duke transfer. So we got a couple of grad transfers that have helped shore things up. And these two teams did not meet during the regular season.
Oh, Kelly Torres was about to chuck it down to third because she <laughs> thought that was a strikeout. That was a really nice spot, but in the first inning, Cassidy Curd is still trying to develop the strike zone back behind the plate. Scott Mayer back behind the dish, calling balls and strikes. If Curd can show consistency on that pitch, I think she'll be able to get that called strike throughout this game. Great way to start for the freshman back-to-back -back strikeouts. Uh, Clemson, third seed under John Rittman this year with 46 wins. Valerie Cagle tied for second in the ACC in home runs. Also right up there in earn run average. And they've used the long ball, third most in the ACC. And speaking of Valerie Cagle, here she is coming up to bat. Again, playing first base when she doesn't pitch, doesn't start as a pitcher. Just missed that one. Yeah, whenever you foul a ball straight back, it shows that you've timed up the pitcher. So Kegel did a really nice job in the on-deck circle to be able to get down the timing of Curd coming out of the circle. Knowing that Curd does not have a dependable changeup. Kegel got underneath it. Playable for the shortstop. Baker. Very nice one, two, three inning for Curd. Two seed behind Florida State. Jennings, one of those true freshmen that have really led the way, a top 10 finalist for the NFCA National Freshman of the Year, along with her teammate and starting pitcher, Cassidy Curd. Millie Thompson, the lefty, gets the ball first for the Tigers. Yeah, Thompson working so quickly, towing the rubber and going right at these hitters. On the ground, fielded by Cagle. When well, Thompson in the circle gets her 18th start on the season, we've seen her complete seven games, but here, look for her from the left side. She's got a hidden, hidden delivery for a righty, a dominant drop ball, and has developed a change up into a very trusted pitch and has started to throw it more than any other pitch in her arsenal. Now Deja Davis sends one into the gap. It's gonna make it all the way to the wall. Davis with the one out double. To have Deja Davis still on campus for Duke is such an ace in the hole for them to know that they have this veteran at the plate sitting in a DH role because of the health of those knees. She struggled to keep them healthy when she's played defense and hit for herself. So now in an offensive role only able to really stay strong and capitalize on opportunities at the plate and give Duke great chances to score at the top of the lineup. Five year starter for Duke. Giselle Tapia trying to get her in. There's that changeup you referenced from Thompson. Yeah, that's the difference between the two pitchers that we're seeing in this matchup so far. Knowing that Thompson can throw that changeup with a lot of control. On the other side, Cassidy Curd does not trust her changeup, so it'll just be a lot of velocity coming out for Duke. Oh, one pitch. So Davis, who chops it down the right field line. Olivia Watkins over in the first base coach's box. Marissa Young, the head coach, over in the third base box for Duke. Top of you got to walk. There's Coach Young, like John Rittman. Got to build it. their programs from the ground up. Yeah, brought in a couple of years early to be able to establish the way that they wanted their programs to grow. Brought in early, able to recruit early to get players into their programs before being able to actually play softball. So there were a lot of red shirts that first year before taking the field. And their meteoric rise to the cream of the crop in this league. Duke winning the ACC tournament championship two years ago by beating Clemson in just their fourth year in existence. That 
will get the runner over to third. Cagle steps on it to get Tapia. When we've seen this infield mix give some unique hops to the defense on the infield, that one almost ate up Cagle, but she bodied it up as she was playing very deep on the infield. Gets the out, but Duke pushes a runner over to third base to be 60 feet away from getting on the board. And for Anna Gold, who has had a terrific season. Most home runs in a single season in Duke softball history. Pam, that changeup is nasty. I'm so glad I don't have to face <laughs> it, but it's an important pitch for Thompson to be able to control in this game, knowing that there's going to be hitters like on a gold stepping to the plate with a ton of home run power. Gold. Gold, gold not even not only leads this team in home runs, but she also leads in RBI. So with an opportunity here to push Davis in from third, Duke really trying to set the tone early as they held Clemson scoreless in the top half of the inning. She's down 0-2 to Thompson with Davis over on third. Anna Gold coming into the weekend and still with 18 home runs, which is in the top 10 in the nation, tied with Valerie Cable, who has 18. Yeah, the national leader also in the ACC, Taylor Roby at Louisville. They've been relieved from duties in this championship series, having lost yesterday. Thompson fired up after striking out gold to Strand Davis at third. Change up will be a difference maker for Thompson. She uses it. John Rittman's Tigers came out on the short end of the stick in both championship games. Yeah, the past two years, Clemson has been in that championship game, has not been able to find a way to get that critical run to be able to get the win. But you have to remember, Clemson's still such a new program just in their fourth season. Yeah. But remember, their first season was 2020, so they're really just three and a half yeah. years old when it comes to softball. They'd be in preschool if they were humans. <laughs> Caroline Jacobson, this might be a little weird. This is the first time that she has faced her former team. Started at Duke and now taking on her former club. They did not meet during the regular season. She played four years at Duke, got a degree in political science. Cassidy Curd, though, a freshman, so this is a new pitcher for her. But again, one of those veteran pieces that Coach Rittman added that has helped leadership-wise and certainly with their productivity. When Jacobson led Duke in home run power back in 2020. She had 12 on the season last year as a Blue Devil. This year, almost matching that number as she's got 11 on the season in a Clemson uniform. And was part of that Duke team that beat Clemson two years ago in the ACC championship final. That was a one nothing. Just great, like a throwback game. Cagle pitching. It's back in the Peyton St. George era. Way back when. It was two years ago. <laughs> it was a great game. Eight to six was the final last year when Florida State beat Clemson in the final. 2-2 Two -two to Jacobson. Hit right to Jada Baker. And jamming up Jacobson in a big way here. An easy out at shortstop. Jacobson just not able to get the big part of the barrel to the ball. So an easy out for Duke. Leah Logaleo starting at shortstop throughout her career after starting out in the outfield for John Rittman. Had not been a shortstop until she got to college. How difficult would that be to say, hey, you're a shortstop now in a D1 program? Well, and typically you see coaches recruiting shortstops and putting them at different positions on the field. The opposite is true for Logaleo. 
She was recruited to play in the outfield. Big power to the pull side. Dominant pull side hitter, eight home runs on the year, but has not had a home run since March 31st. Third team, all ACC performer. Great athlete in high school in Nashville. Actually a late find according to John Rittman in softball. Volleyball was one of her better sports. Well, defensively, this Clemson squad is first in the ACC in fielding percentage. Logaleo has most of the errors on the team, but it's because she plays there at shortstop where a lot of hot shots come right at her. And Coach John Rittman says he's so pleased with the way his shortstop plays. Oh, that got her right in the helmet. First base runner for Clemson. And that pitch definitely got away from Kurd. That rise ball up and in, trying to jam the hands of Logaleo. But luckily, she does turn the correct way to keep that face safe without the cage on the helmet. Only the third batter that Kurd has hit all season. And this, her 85th inning of work. Maddie Moore, the second baseman, starting all year. Gets the bunt down. Gets the job done. There are two away. Selfless play to be able to move a runner there. A good defense gets the out. A big bat coming up for Clemson. Raskowski getting more playing time because she finished off the regular season with a bang or two. Yeah, this is just her fourth start on the season, but at home runs in back-to-back -back games against Virginia Tech to finish out the regular season. Clemson lost two out of three games at Tech. Will not close out the regular season like they would like. A tough loss to Liberty in the midweek. So they lost three of their last four games coming into this championship and then squeaked out a two to one eight inning win yesterday against North Carolina. When this Clemson team started out as ACC play, a solid 12 and 0 and then ran into the buzzsaw of Florida State where they got swept. Florida State going into Clemson for the first time ever and Clemson could not come away with a win. Wiskowski down 0 and 2. Got her looking. Still scoreless as we go to the bottom of the second. Reserved in Cagle. That was Thompson yesterday. Didn't pitch, but had on the pink, like, captain's hat that was backwards, of course. Of course. And then today going with the unique eye black look. Well, and to have such different pitchers be able to gel so well on a team, they talked about how they grew up together pitching for the same pitching coach. Kegel playing first base here today, got the win in the circle yesterday for Clemson. But these two pitchers, not only are they different in terms of how they carry themselves off the field, but in the circle, complementing each other so well. Nina Vega had herself a weekend just in one game yesterday. Going three for four with four runs driven in. Triple short of the cycle in Duke's seven to one win over Georgia Tech. First team all ACC. 
16 multi-hit games and has been absolutely on fire to close the season. Voted to the leadership council as just a freshman, has made an immediate impact for this Duke's, Duke squad stepping on campus. Nine for her last 16, including the series against Pitt. She'll get on base. Maddie Moore with the bobble over at second. We've talked about the infield mix this whole championship because that ground is giving the ball a funny hop. As a defender, you've got to charge hard to pick your hop. Not bad. Three freshmen all making the all-freshman team. And Kurd and Deanna Jennings making the cut for the top 10 national player of the year finalist list. According to the NFCA, it was Vega who really showed out yesterday and gets on base. It's been ruled an E4 on Moore. Here's Kelly Torres, the catcher, who got her first career triple yesterday. So valuable behind the plate. Thompson fields it. Vega advances over to second. When Duke not afraid to play station to station, put pressure on the defense to execute with a little small ball by Torres, who just lays down a beautiful sack bunt back to the pitcher. Sometimes that's the best defender to put a sacrifice bunt down to, knowing they're the furthest defender away from the ball. Runner on second now for Claire Davidson, batting seventh. Davidson has done some pitching in her career. In fact, a couple years ago, when they were the ACC tournament champs, combined with Shelby Walters for Duke's first program no-hitter. Now she shows she can hit. Going into center field. Vega scores easily from second. Well, and with the rain that has fallen from the sky here early today, the outfield is playing really quick. So this ball, as it gets to the outfield, Mackenzie Clark has to make sure she takes a good angle because it skips and gets on top of her really fast. The ball to the outfield allows Vega and her wheels to glide on in and put a run up on the board. Hit up the middle, Logaleo. Turns a double play to end the inning, but an unearned run comes across. Davidson with the RBI on ESPN. SEC, they can get through all that rain. It'll be the combination swimming and softball championship <laughs> at this rate. And then, the yes, your eyes do not deceive you. There's a Pac-12 tournament going on. Inaugural, champ, ch inaugural tournament held in Tucson, Arizona this year. Arizona giving UCLA a little bit of a scare as UCLA came away with a 4-3 win in last night's yeah. game against the two foes. And there was a little, little skips in some hearts of Arizona fans when they saw they were up 2 to nothing. but UCLA, but my Brady, she's good. Yeah, she is. Yeah, right. JoJo Hyatt, the catcher for Clemson, starting things off here in the third. Pam Ward and Jenny Dalton-Hill joining you on this cloudy, but so far knock on wood. Not stormy day. The first semifinal moved up to 11 a.m. today to try to avoid storms that are anticipated now to hit around 6 Eastern time. So we hope to avoid that so we can stay on schedule. Cassidy Curd. A couple of lefties going today. Curd for Duke, Thompson for Clemson. On a big difference between Thompson and Kurd. Kurd coming in with a little more velocity. She's up in the upper 60s, where Thompson down in the lower 60s. And velocity, a big part of pitching. It's one of the three S's. It's the speed. Ooh. Scary moment as the ball Mercy. gets into the dugout for Clemson. 
but from the circle, you're looking for a pitcher that can com command three different ways, speed, spot, and spin. So right now, Curd the advantage with a ton of speed coming out of the circle. She's hitting her spots very well, jamming up these Clemson hitters and has been able to keep them off the board. 2-2 on the way to Hyatt. Curd in the circle, we talked about Duke having a couple of, or Clemson, pardon me, having a couple of players that have been honored for their accomplishments in the ACC. Cassidy Curd certainly making a splash as a true freshman out of Port St. Lucie, Florida. Got the win yesterday against Georgia Tech in the quarters. Well, and while Curd typically sits around that 67, 68 mile an hour zone, talking to Coach Marissa Young, she said she was pretty amped up in the Liberty game and touched 70. So there is opportunities for growth for the young freshman to gain some velocity, but she's going to have to keep that velocity under control and try to get some movement on it with some spin for next season as she continues to develop. Full count, got her going upstairs. Four strikeouts for the freshman. Yeah, and the rise ball is always one of those pitches that can attack a big swing. And JoJo Hyatt down here in the eighth slot in the lineup trying to get things started for Clemson could not catch up to that ball as it continued to climb the ladder. Reedy Davenport. Her first look at Curd. Grad transfer from Florida Gulf Coast. Where she left her name all over the record books there. Top 10 in seven different offensive categories. So you would think because she's the starting pitcher, maybe she'll go back in the dugout. So this is the big difference, too, between her and Cagle. Cagle likes to go back into the dugout, be alone, collect her thoughts. Millie puts on a silly pink captain's hat. <laughs> I love that emotion that she's able to just hang on to and use in the game. Davenport skies it. Vega. Pam, I'm pretty sure you would be more like Kegel in the dugout. And I can guarantee you I am no Millie Thompson in a dugout, but I don't know that I've ever been around someone with that kind of flair in a dugout. Hmm. I don't know that well, there were... Would it have been, have been suppressed flair because of Coach Candrea? Would yeah. he have allowed that flair? I don't think so. I don't mean either. But John Rittman <laughs> is in Candrea form. Yep. And Rittman allows it. Clark with another Clark-like cut. But even look at the water bottle. I and mean, she's sending positive messages. You matter. She's getting ready to go back out on the field, taking off the, the hat. And I wonder if she'll go out with the necklace. Clark struck out against Curd her first time up. First time through the lineup for Curd. She is not allowed a hit, has hit a batter, and has four strikeouts. Good start for the freshman. Well, and other than that sacrifice bunt, all the other outs have been recorded in the air. 0-2, Clark, another one goes up. Tapia, got it. Retired in order by Kurt. Dallas from Florida and Brady for UCLA. If their teams don't go deep, do you cut them from your list as well? I do. Skyler Wallace. Well, then who steps up then? That's the issue. Maya Brady, I think, for UCLA has had a year that puts her in that conversation. But I need Clemson to take it further than regionals. I need them to get to supers. And then Valerie Cagle, for me, walks away with this hand over fist. She is so good. 
and she's one of those players that can do it from both sides. And I know, Pam, you and I disagree on the fact of postseason longevity giving way to the National Player of the Year nod. Cagle for sure is the best player on both sides of the ball. Th therefore, the should be National Player of the Year. Well, Pam, do you have a list? Yes, I do. Here is Freelich starting things off against Millie Thompson, who is all business. And so you're, you're, we saw your top three. Here are my top three. <laughs> For what reasons, Pam? Well, player of the year, you see, leading the ACC in hits, not to mention the ridiculousness in the circle, and this kid can flat out cook. In the circle, in the batter's box, in the kitchen. Thompson couldn't feel that. By the way, neither one of us has a vote, just to clarify for Correct. people out there who might get be going, I can't believe they let these people vote. <laughs> we don't get a vote. We're just trying to sway the committee who is on that one because I'm Valerie Cagle, Valerie Cagle is so good. She her number 72 has been chosen for a reason. It's not just a random number. She uses it as a goal setting tool. She picked it up when she stepped on campus for Clemson trying to get herself to 72 miles an hour as a freshman in the circle and able to do it. She got 23 wins in the circle. Okay, back to the game. <laughs> Deanna, Deanna Jennings up. That was ruled a single hot shot that Thompson couldn't handle. So an infield single, single pardon me, for Freelich to start things off here in the third. I just want to see Maya Brady or Skylar Wallace go into the circle and do what Cagle does. They cannot. Kelly Zampa is your pinch runner, so I win. Bunt, bunt goes down, Cagle fields it, not in time. Good wheels for Jennings, who is just a tremendous freshman. Well, Jennings' barrel control is the key to this. Not only is she so fast down the line, but able to put this ball in such a good spot. Thompson needs to be more aggressive out of the circle on this one. It required Cagle to come in so far from first base. No chance to grab the wheels down the line. Duke really putting the pressure on this Clemson defense. Yeah, how about that? They have two runners on base, and the ball hasn't gotten past the pitcher yet in the infield. And so much danger, and we're going to see a pitching change. Brooke McCubbin coming in to relieve Millie Thompson. We will have more on the change. Two on, nobody out in the third for Duke. So Millie Thompson has been lifted. Two innings plus two batters. Gave up four hits. The only run that was scored in the second inning was unearned. And not Valerie Cagle, but Brooke McCubbin coming in for the Tigers. Well, and McCubbin, it'll be her 18th appearance on the season. She's given up just three home runs on the year. It's the break between her walks and strikeouts that I'm, makes me a little bit nervous in this situation. And this is a very nervous time for Clemson fans. Two on, nobody out for Deja Davis, who doubled her last time up. She has five hits on the weekend, creeping up towards hitting 400 on the season. Such an important component to this young Duke program in its sixth season. fifth full season because yet one of them was 2020 under architect of the program Marissa Young Davenport playing in at third base very first season in 2018 in 2020, everything came to a halt. Championship a couple of years ago, 44 wins, including the one nothing win over Clemson in the ACC championship championship game. 
Well, and they've continued to make strides in the postseason, able to make it to their first Super Regional last year, did lose to UCLA. But as this team continues to improve and evolve, Marissa Young hoping that this team makes its next step to Oklahoma City. Most of the regional last year before going to UCLA where they lost in the Supers. Davis goes down swinging the first batter that McCubbin has faced. Again, the first title. Peyton St. George was the championship MVP, one of the great pitchers on that squad. Stork went over Florida State in the semis, and then that just terrific. It was St. George against Cagle in that one nothing classic. Well, Shelby Walters combined on that game as well, so it wasn't a Peyton St. George complete game. Cagle did throw every pitch of that one. It comes down to keeping and retaining your players. Shelby Walters actually transferred from Duke this past year and landed at a new school, a different conference. Now Giselle Tapia with one away and two on. And that pitch was sold by Jojo Hyatt back there behind the plate. We've seen earlier in this game that pitch on the inside corner not get called. But look at how solid she is in that receive. She just bought that pitch for McCovey. Ogaleo gets it over to Kegel. And Tapia is called safe. Let's see if there is a challenge on this. Well, that's a difficult play for the shortstop, Logaleo, because as she's trying to charge hard on this one, she's got an advancing runner going in front of her. So a seasoned shortstop would run and try to make contact with the runner, not for any kind of reason other than to get the call and the dead ball immediately out there in the field. But this one close enough that John Rittman is going to go ahead and challenge the call at first base. We do have on-site video replay here in South Bend. It has worked very well. I think that's a good call down the line. The replay operator will be looking for, does the glove close around the ball? That's the securing of the catch that the umpire will be looking for. Has to happen before the foot touches the bag. Yeah, so over at first, Olivia Watkins over there trying to call safe at the same time. As Tapia advances down the line, she loses all her cards. Hey, all in the name of trying to get your owner safe. And now the base is juiced. Coach Watkins got it right, too. So the bases are loaded. A couple of infield singles and a bunt single for Anna Gold. Gold struck out swinging her first time up against departed starter Millie Thompson. Went 0 for 3 yesterday in the win against Georgia Tech. But a huge chance, infield playing in. Gold lifts this. Foul ball that is caught by Jacobson. Everybody. Anticipating the tag up. They get it and get another run. Well, and out there in right, Jacobson knows that there's going to be a tag advancement on the play. With the ball in foul territory, all the runners get back quickly. So the ball is dropped, but after the catch, on the transfer for the throw, because of that miscue, everybody's safe, everybody tags up, and Duke pushes another run across. Yep, that was indeed a catch, and Jacobson again, the former Duke Blue Devil, unable to get it out of her glove quickly. Tapia now at second, Jennings at third. And the lead is now two to nothing. Second out of the inning. It's Amina Vega it's robbed by Logaleo, who was able to get there just in the nick of time and end the threat 
Duke up 2 nothing over Clemson when we come back. Have a chance to chat with Clemson head coach John Rittman. You are watching the 2023 ACC Softball Championship presented by Auto Owners Insurance. 2-0 lead for Duke over Clemson in this ACC semifinal. Joined now by Clemson head coach John Rittman. His team has yet to get a hit. Coach, what do you do to try to solve Cassidy Kurd? Well, she's tough. This is the first time we've seen her. You know, she's got a lot of spin on the rise ball. So we have to uh, honestly just have better competitive at bats. I think we've got to be aggressive in the strike zone. And uh, like I said, you know, have competitive at bats and see if we can get back in this thing. Well, Coach, you and I both know the rise ball is always easy to swing at. But when it comes to Valerie Cagle on this squad, how have you seen her develop into just this all around powerhouse for you this year? Oh, she's just a tremendous athlete, five tool softball player, great work ethic. Um, you know, she's mentally tough. She uh, works as hard as anybody and she's just grown and matured. And, and uh, that's the product you're seeing this year. Yep, best player in the country. Thank you very much, Coach Rittman. We appreciate it. All right, thank All right, you. John Rittman, been in this game a long time and haven't even talked about it yet. The Valerie Cagle is coming back from a very serious off-season surgery. She played in pain all year, had a slipping biceps tendon that was repaired, and Clemson wasn't even sure that the, the surgery would work, meaning they weren't sure they would even have her this year. You're right. She's a generational talent, according to Coach John Rittman, and that surgery was one of the scarier pieces of the summer, not knowing what kind of shape Valerie Cagle would be in for the season. Her numbers have been eye-popping. Miklish leads off. Cagle will bat second here in the top of the fourth inning. Winner gets Florida State tomorrow at 1 Eastern on ESPN2. For the ACC championship, Clemson has been to back-to-back -back finals. Millie Thompson started the game. Now back in the dugout. After pitching the first two innings. Cassidy Curd has really been a great addition as a true freshman. Left-hander complimenting Jayla Wright. Who got the start yesterday. Two zero now for Miklish Up down the middle of the plate. Yeah, that was definitely a missed opportunity by Miklish. That ball was left big, but when it comes to her last strikeout, she struck out on a ball up in the zone. So it's scary when you see a ball sitting waist high. You expect that ball to continue to climb, but that one sat flat. Miklish unable to capitalize. When you can see this inning, Kurd's rise ball continues to get up and away from Torres. So she's throwing it maybe with a little bit more velocity, but that release a little bit late. Torres has been so good back behind the plate. So you know that if she's missing these, they're definitely rising quickly and getting out of the zone. 3-1 pitch with Cagle on deck. Coach Rittman talking about it's the first time they have seen Curd, true freshman. Remember, they did not play Duke during the regular season, but they have absolutely nothing on Curd. Would not have seen her last year when she was still in high school. And that is a called strike three. Fifth strikeout for Curd. Valerie Cagle pitched and hit in pain all of last season. A couple of months after the season was over, she had the surgery. Yeah, an inflamed bicep tendon continued to slip in and out of the groove that it's supposed to sit in, and she was struggling with it so bad in the summer that she opted to go for that surgery in the middle of the summer. And Clemson, not knowing if she was going to be able to make it back, began throwing in October, pitching progression starting in November. 
throwing her very first game after surgery in February. And Pam may be the most impressive one of that as she threw the first perfect game of her collegiate career on March 8th. All after that surgery when there were so many question marks. And you're seeing now that Heard being very careful with Cagle, who popped out to short her first time up. And we saw Cagle a lot last year. There were times when you would see her get emotional in the dugout and even cry. And she didn't want anybody to know that she was in pain. And so there were some questions kind of about not necessarily her toughness, but certainly about how emotional she was. But the kid was in, just in pain. Yes, this young woman showed such great tenacity to be able to throw so well in the circle and hit for so much power at the plate. And when we talked to Coach Rittman, he said pitching or hitting actually caused more pain than pitching. Swung at that pitch. Two years ago, she was the ACC freshman and player of the year was Cagle. Last year, that's when she hit 376. Last year, the average down to 308. But again, playing with that injury, and now her numbers are just through the roof. 3-1. Mighty cut. Well, in a 3-0 and and 3-1 and count, you can just rear back and really let go, swing big. But now with two strikes, she'll shorten up a little bit, punch this ball in play. After falling behind 3-0, the true freshman, Cassidy Kurd struck out Cagle. And look at the smile on Kurd's face. That is a huge strikeout. Going against what is projected to be the national player of the year. <laughs> look at the emotion. That's exactly what you're looking for in a young freshman going up against the hottest hitter, the biggest hitter in Clemson's lineup. Six strikeouts for Kurd. Jacobson lined out to short her first time up. Clemson four through nine batters, starting here with Jacobson. Yesterday against North Carolina, 0 for 15, 0 for 4 today. So once you get past Clark, Miklish, and Cagle, a combined 0 for 19 for Clemson. Because as in case you missed it, they had to go to eight innings yesterday to beat North Carolina two to one. And Cassidy Kurd has struck out half of the batters she has faced in this game. Well, this is a point of conversation for Clemson, knowing that it's only going to get harder from here. Postseason play, not for the faint of heart. You have to make sure that your game plan is ready to go because you're going to be facing some difficult pitchers down the stretch. And the way that Clemson is lining up for postseason, it looks like they're going to sit around that 15-16 mark if they get to host. I don't know that I want to be the 16 seed in the NCAA tournament, knowing that I would then match up with Oklahoma. So if I'm Clemson, I'm hoping that I hit maybe 17 and match up with a travel for regionals. You would rather travel to a regional to be in 16 and have to deal with Oklahoma. Most definitely. I mean, I don't, we've seen it year in and year out where teams, you know, are excited to host regionals, but then they see their seed and realize who they're matched up against. It's a pretty short ride to regionals or to super regionals and back. Not able to get to Oklahoma City. You just get to go to Norman. 2-2 two -two to Jacobson. Just flicked at that off-speed pitch. Selection Sunday coming up in a couple of days. Clemson has been no hit so far by Cassidy Kurd. They yeah, haven't even gotten the ball out of the infield today. Heard looking to strike out the side as the count goes full. 
to Jacobson. Ogilvy on deck. She's been the only base runner because she was hit by a pitch back in the second inning. And now Marissa Young comes out to talk to her young pitcher. Young was a very good pitcher herself. In fact, the Big Ten Pitcher of the Year in 2002. Next year, the Player of the Year in the league. But the way Kurd has been throwing, it's been absolutely dominant over these Clemson hitters. That rise ball has been a point that Clemson just can't lay off of it. A ton of swing and miss. But the biggest strikeout of the day coming to the last batter, Valerie Cagle. I like this conference by Marissa Young coming to the circle to try to calm down the young freshman who's really riding high this inning, trying to strike out the side. She is one hit batter away from being perfect so far in this game. All three batters that she has faced in this inning, Nicholas Cagle and now Jacobson, have gone to a full count, and she struck out the first two. Lifted into the outfield where Jennings easily catches up to it. Still no hits for Clemson. When we come back, we will speak with Marissa Young, the head coach of the Devils. ACC softball semifinal. Clemson trailing Duke two to nothing. Pleased to be joined by Marissa Young, the head coach for the Blue Devils. Coach, I was really looking forward to seeing Cassidy Kerr throw, and all she's done is no hit Clemson so far. What are you seeing from your young phenom? She has just continued to progress and get better as the season's gone on. Uh, she's been in a lot of high pressure moments and she loves competing on the big stage. So she's really showing what she can do out here. Well, and with that rise ball, I'm grateful I don't have to step into the box to hit against her because she's so good. When it comes to this matchup, though, this is a matchup that you have not had this year. How does that play into your game plan knowing you haven't seen each other? I think it's great. We just come into it um, not worrying about any three-game series prior to this. Uh, I love seeing the two newest teams in the ACC competing here in the semifinals, and we're just excited to get after it. And we are excited for the rest of this tournament as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Coach Marissa Young already has one ACC championship under her belt a couple years ago when they beat Clemson, and Cassidy Curd, part of this incredible freshman class that Coach Young and the rest of her staff have recruited onto campus. And she is no hitting this Clemson team that coming into this weekend was second in the league in average, 16th in the nation. And they've only hit one ball out of the outfield. That was Jacobson's fly ball to end the fourth inning. As we head to the bottom of the fourth, Kelly Torres. Six home runs and one triple on the season. And then she just got plumped by McCubbin and ran down to get to first. Wow. Did you ever run down to first after you got hit by a pitch? Heck yes. Oh, you gotta show on. that it didn't hurt. You can't stand there and <laughs> rub it. And you definitely don't rub it after you get hit. She wore it on the arm guard though. So while it does sting a little bit, didn't affect her legs. Go ahead and leg that one out. Definitely not a triple. Yeah, she hit the triples and now she's <laughs> feeling it. She's Usain Bolt out there right now. <laughs> Gotta love it. Sarah Goddard running for Torres. Sarah Goddard has a lot of Notre Dame ties, South Bend ties. Talk about that if we can in a second. First, Claire Davidson trying to add to this two to nothing lead. Goddard, the pinch runner over at first. Both of her parents went to Notre Dame and her mod, mom, Rachel, actually was on the swim team here for the Irish. Kid from Carmel, Indiana, a couple hours away. Getting a play in this important game where her parents both went to school. Davidson with an RBI single back in the third inning off Thompson. Second to the last batter that Thompson faced before McCubbin relieved her. When you're seeing Duke so aggressive 
at the plate. I love their discipline on the strike zone. Only getting sat down once by McCubbin and once by Thompson, the starter for Clemson. Fighting that one off. A little change of speed by McCubbin. McCubbin goes to that change up the most in a two and two count, so proves that the scouting report is accurate. Davidson waited on it. Moore takes the lead runner out. And Christiana Watson is going to pinch hit for Jada Baker. She pinch hit yesterday, and it was a successful at bat. It was a huge at bat. Are you kidding me, Pam? It was absolutely tattooed. She comes from great hitting stock. With this home run off the bench by Christiana Watson, she's a transfer coming in from ASU to Duke. This ball, a no doubter. Huge home run swing. Big celebration. They're hoping she can do it again here against Clemson. Some pretty good uh, genes, too, right? And Davidson's bloodlines from the softball world. Well, you saw her hometown, Tucson, Arizona. Her mom, Laura Espinosa Watson, played at Arizona. Was the home run queen back in the 90s. Team had a modicum of success back then, right? Yeah, there were a couple uh, national yeah. championships back in the day. Or three. <laughs> Teammate of... Jenny Dalton Hill, who played second base on those great teams for Coach Mike Andrea. Laura and I played back up the middle. Laura was a shortstop. I was second base. Our favorite thing to do was turn double plays and hit back-to-back -back jacks in the lineup. So that'd be fun. I do cheer for Watson <laughs> when she comes to the plate. And here is her her little girl, all grown up and swinging the bat. That is a foul ball. As Davenport made a stab at it at third. On well, your job down the line on the hot corner is to make sure to defend the line. So a ball that gets by you has to be foul. That's a hot shot. It does squeak left of the bag. But that one got on top of Davenport in a hurry. Watson down now, one and two. Good job protecting the plate. That change of speed, that change up. Man, it is so hard to just get the barrel off your shoulder because you've had to double clutch. But a good job of just fouling it off to keep the bat alive. Good take. Nope. Yeah, very good hold. That pitch on the inside, definitely off the plate. Good plate discipline by Watson. Do you remember what number? Oh, here we go. Let's watch the no swing. No, oh, really good job holding up. Not that time. It allows Davidson to get down to second. But first base was occupied, so while Watson does leg it out, there is no chance for her to get to first base. She's automatically out with that swing and miss. It does get an advancement, though, for Davidson to get to second base. Second strikeout for McCubbin. Now the right fielder friend. Jessica Freelick, Logaleo, long throw, got her. That was perfect to end the inning. And Strand Davidson, Clemson still. And right now, the team needs to figure out Cassidy Curd. They are being no hit by the freshman as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Logaleo leading things off. 
She's been the only base runner hit by a curd pitch in the second inning. With the Clemson Tigers, it's the eighth time that they have gone into the fifth inning trailing. But they have won five of the previous eight. So there is certainly some hope. Five of the previous seven, pardon me, this is the eighth time, so still some hope, and they're only down by a couple of runs. But the, Kurt, Kurt has been masterful, though. They're going to have to figure out how to attack Kurt in this at bat. Logaleo did not attack that pitch middle of the plate. That cookie got away from her, and now you'll just see Kurt climb the ladder, use that rise ball. Really good velocity out of the circle by Kurd. I am impressed by the composure of the young freshman in the circle thrown in the high 60s, using that curveball to both sides and a little jumpy rise to get the swing and the miss. I wish we could have a Jenny cam in the booth so people could see a reaction when batters swing at pitchers they shouldn't or leave cookies just hanging over the plate and don't offer. Yeah, I don't hide that very well, do I? <laughs> Waited on that and spoiled it. And good job keeping the at-bat alive. Those change-ups can really expose the balance of a hitter in their swing. If you get out of your legs onto that front side, the barrel usually trails with you. So a good hitter who can stay balanced on that mix of speed is able to get the barrel through to be a little bit more potent at the plate. But expect to see more velocity. Oh, actually a 2-2 count. Expect her to go back to that changeup. Another full count. She had three full counts. And all three batters that she faced in the last inning. Got out of it with a couple of strikeouts and a flyout. When well, Pam, we keep track of how many 3-2 counts batters face within a game. But the, the telltale sign for me here at the ACC Championship is when we hear that Jaws theme, because that's the indicator that it's a 3-2 count. And we've heard it a lot here in this game. Leo pops it up. Long run. Vega was able to get a glove on it in foul territory. When, when you go to lay out for a ball, you don't want to try to secure it with your other hand. Typically, that makes you pull back the glove a little bit. When you go to lay out, you want to go with one arm. Give yourself that additional reach at the end. So as she goes with two, she comes up a little bit short. I need her to dive with one and get that little extra reach at the end. Sky high. For Baker just on the outfield grass. Cassidy Curd setting him up, mowing him down, and smiling all the way through it. <laughs> Wouldn't you be smiling? Look at the outing she's having here today. She is no hitting this Clemson squad who has been so good at manufacturing runs. They got 70 home runs on the season, but unable to just come away with even a hit against Kurt. Maddie Moore takes a strike. I mean, this Clemson squad is a team that is second in the ACC in batting average, third in home run production. Cannot figure out Kurt though today. Just the second time that Moore has seen her today. We're in the fifth inning, and she hasn't even gotten through the lineup twice. 
Moore is the number six hitter. As you get to the later innings, I mean, we're sitting in the fifth inning, and as you get to this part of the game, a lot of times a hitter will start to press, knowing that they may not get up again. The good news for both of these teams that the postseason is definitely in their future. But Clemson right now needing to really adjust against Curd in the circle. When a good hitter, when they're standing up to the plate, will take notice of what's going on defensively out in the field. Before that pitch, the center fielder, Deanna Jennings, actually ran from the left side of second base all the way over to the right side of second base. And as a big time hitter, you've got to be picking up those outfielders because that'll tip you as to what pitch is coming. Change up. Pitch number 75 on the way from Curd. Jesse Harper. She said to move that fast and she was playing at Arizona. <laughs> and it wasn't that long ago. So luckily she's still <laughs> quick on her feet over there. A good shortstop for Arizona. Not she, too long ago. And she could she could put some pop in the pitch, couldn't she? More than pop. That girl could <laughs> rate. Such a pretty swing from the right side. Loved watching her hit. First year as a volunteer assistant here, or at Clemson, I should say. She was a three-time All-American at Arizona. Another 2-2 two -two on the way to Moore. Just nicked it. Well, and the best way to attack a rise ball is number one, don't swing at it. But number two, <laughs> make sure that on the approach, you keep your knob and your barrel above the ball as you go through your swing because that ball will continue to rise. You know Curd loves to climb the ladder with that when you've got to show great discipline on that ball up in the zone. Well, we're doing a good job just fighting off these pitches right now. Ogaleo saw eight pitches before she popped up to start the inning. Another full count. She's been kind of living dangerously, you can say, with full counts, but this is, uh, wait, five batters in a row. They've gone to a full count. Seven overall, five in a row. Hurd has gotten them all so far. Moore chops it. Baker gets the out, so another long at bat. Another full count and still results in an out. But you can tell that Moore was expecting a ball up in the zone. She straight up tomahawked that one to try to keep it out of the air. The full count had resulted in four strikeouts, two flyouts. So that just the first ground ball hit in a full count approach.
Kurt has retired 10 in a row since hitting Logaleo with a pitch in the second inning. That has been the only blemish for her. Otherwise, we'd be looking at a perfect game. Two out, nobody on, Waskowski. One of eight strikeout victims for Kurd today. Just the second time she's seen her. We do not have a radar gun, in case you're wondering, because I'm sitting here thinking the same thing you are at home. I wonder how fast that was. <laughs> Answer pretty fast. And then the off speed. That's the difference, right? The, what's, is there such a thing as a, a, a really good difference between your fast stuff and a change up uh, miles per hour wise? I mean, somebody who's throwing 70 consistently should try to hit that change up 10 to 12 miles an hour slower for the change up. The off speed's a little bit faster than that, but yeah, you're looking for something that will get a double clutch out of a hitter, not fast enough that they can catch up to in their regular stride and swing. So a good changeup has to be slow enough that a hitter has to stop themselves and doesn't have enough time to re-clutch and come back through the ball. A three-pitch strikeout. Seven now for Curd, who is no hitting the Clemson Tigers. Cassidy Curd dealing in the circle. Clemson cannot figure out how to hit the young freshman in the circle. Duke leading this one now two to nothing as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Duke took one game from Florida State. Florida State just lost two league games all year. One to Duke and one to Virginia. And they swept all the other series. Cassidy Curd, no hitting Clemson right now. Brooke McCubbin in the circle. Relieved starter Millie Thompson in the third inning. Mallory Cagle had been warming up in the last half inning, but she is back at first base for the Tigers and playing in, as is Reedy Davenport at third. Anna Jennings, very dangerous at the top of this order. Logaleo able to grab it for the first out of the fifth. And that's such an important out. You want to make sure that you keep that kind of speed off the bases. Deanna Jennings has been kind of a, a tap and go hitter, hard slap hitter. And with how hard the ground is, I'm surprised that she went for the slug slap rather than the hard slap into the ground to use that hard surface to get the bounce. Well, another hard hit ball, but Maddie Moore was exactly where she needed to be. A couple of quick outs for McCubbin. Pretty efficient inning so far, but McCubbin leaving the ball pretty big. Luckily, the defense is right there. Both of those balls squared up. Those get past the infield. They're going to the wall. Nobody on for Tapia. Duke has had a runner on base in every inning today. Scoring the two runs. They have left four on so far. Tapia with an infield single, one of their five hits. Trying to get back into the championship game. They won it all a couple of years ago. The 2021 season, the first time they won 30 games. They started out 20 and 0. Duke did beat Clemson 1 0 in a great final. One two, lifted into left. Nicholas drifts over. 
into foul territory. First one, two, three inning for Clemson to retire Duke. ACC Softball Championship is presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Simple human sense. Welcome back to the second ACC Championship semifinal. Florida State awaits the winner of Duke and Clemson. Pam Ward and Jenny Dalton Hill joining you on this cloudy, but so far not rainy afternoon. Games moved up today to avoid the showers that we expect to hit. Around 6 p.m. local, Millie Thompson got the start. Didn't do such a bad job, but Cassidy Curd's throwing a no hitter. Cassidy Curd doing so well. and. We know that as Curd toes the rubber here in the sixth, she's got four complete games on the year. The lowest opponent batting average coming into the game at just 144. But this outing, perhaps a statement maker for her as she goes up against Clemson. No hitting them. Clemson running out of outs to try to figure out the freshman. Jojo Hyatt, the catcher, starting off the top of the sixth inning, followed by Davenport, and then to the top of the order and Mackenzie Clark. Hyatt struck out on a rise ball, the only time that she has faced Curd today. First time they have seen this true freshman because they did not play in the regular season. I don't think that Clemson's going to forget the first time they saw Cassidy Curd. No, and they will see her next season. These two teams did not match up in the regular season, but you can expect this will be definitely on the scouting report for next year. Well, and there is potential for these two teams to match up in the postseason. They will not play in regional rounds, knowing that conferences cannot have two participants at one regional from the same conference. But when you look at the postseason, there's always opportunities for conference matchups to happen at that super regional round. Got her looking to start the six. And look at the emotion coming out of the circle for Cassidy Curd. That pitch rides right at the knees, outside corner. Good frame by Torres, sells it well. Eighth strikeout for Curd. Number nine hitter, Reedy Davenport, popped up. And her only at bat today. So far in this ACC championship, Curd, who got some innings in, 1.2 innings in the quarterfinal yesterday, the win over Georgia Tech. Seven innings has given up just one hit, and that was against Tech yesterday. No walks, 10 strikeouts, including eight Ks today. She did finish the regular season very strongly against Pittsburgh. Back-to-back -back days, she got a, had a nine strikeout day and then a 10 strikeout day. Preceded that with the midweek 11 strikeout effort against Longwood. Second hit batter of the day for Curd. And just the second base runner. but I love the exclamation point that Davenport gives. She does wear this one squarely, but after get wearing the pitch, goes ahead, puts the bat down, realizing that this is an opportunity for Clemson to capitalize on a miscue by Duke. And Ansley Houston comes in to run for Davenport over at first. We saw her yesterday in a pinch running role. And now a runner on as we head to the top of the order. Finally in the sixth inning. Clemson has gone 
through the lineup twice. That's how dominating Curb has been, allowing just her second base runner of the day, both on hit pitches or hit by pitches. Here's Clark, who struck out and popped up to first. Nicholas on deck after her, Cagle. Throw down by Torres, handled by Tapia over at first. And I, I appreciate a, an aggressive catcher. However, this throw completely unnecessary. Houston was not far enough off the bag to really give pause. But Torres thought she did. The emotion, you can tell, getting maybe a little bit high for Duke. So Marissa Young coming out of the dugout to come talk to her young pitcher and keep the emotions in check. Cassidy started out the season 12 and 0. Her first loss that midweek to Longwood in late April. She took the loss even though she did not give up a hit. Had 11 strikeouts in that game. Gave up one run. It was unearned. So in her last three games plus this one, she has 37 strikeouts in her last three games and almost six innings. And she's a true freshman. The only blemishes again, the two hit batters, otherwise perfect. Mackenzie Clark. When I'm looking for a different approach by Clark at the plate, you've got Houston over there, the pinch runner at first base. Clark has been swinging out of her shoes in her first two at bats here today against Kurt. I need her to have a shorter stride, be better to contact. Lifts it up in the air. Freelick for the second out. Not under it yet again. And here's Miklish who has struck out both times that she has faced. Heard. Cagle on deck. Safe to say you would rather see Cagle lead off the seventh than hit here in the sixth? 100%. <laughs> ratio and that's actually the last five games because that number I just gave you did not include the Georgia Tech game yesterday in which she went an inning and two-thirds and got a couple of strikeouts so this kid can flat out pitch one what a huge addition for Duke to be able to bring in a freshman like Kurd after so many departures from last season to transfer and graduation. That was the question mark for me coming into the season. Would Duke be able to replenish the circle? And Cassidy Kurd is the answer. Nicholas, who was the offensive hero yesterday in the two to one extra inning win over North Carolina. Great base running. Score on a wild pitch to end it in the eighth. Heartbreaking loss for Lily Backus and the Heels. Duke fans don't understand why that's a ball. We got a lot of them right in front of us. There we go. Now the 3 1. Miklish picked up, thrown over. Baker ends the inning. They leave Cagle in the on deck circle. Duke still being no hit.
Welcome back to the NCAA Championships. Cassidy Curd, the story right now in South Bend, Indiana, as the true freshman is no hitting Clemson. As we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, Duke leading two to nothing. Winner gets Florida State in the championship game tomorrow. Clemson has only been shut out twice all year. And right now, they don't even have a single hit. When Clemson has not been no hit all year long, the fewest number of hits that they've had in a matchup is two. It's happened two, three different times on the season. Just two hits, the least amount they've had all year. They've only been no hit once in their entire existence. And this is their fourth year. That was April of last year, April of 2022, by Notre Dame. Yeah, and this season, those two hit affairs, two came to, from Florida State and one from Virginia. So all in losses. This would be the uh, roughest offensive outing for Clemson if they cannot figure it out in the seventh. And again, the first time they have seen Cassidy Kerr, a true freshman. There is Honor, Grant, Honor Gold's grandfather, Bill, made the trip from Saratoga, New York. His granddaughter at the plate right now has been terrific since coming on campus. As an RBI today, a sack fly back in the third inning. I hope he is appreciative of how famous we are making nice. him back home. He's the man here in South Bend. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping he can hang around. Anna goes down swinging to start out the sixth. Doesn't phase Bill. He knows Anna's good. Yeah, she'll get him next time. Vega now coming up. Scored the first run. Back in the second inning after reaching on an error. McCubbin has been in the circle since the third inning for the Tigers. Sent into left field. Running effort over there by Nicholas, who disappeared and was unable to come up with the catch. Well, I'm always impressed by an outfielder who can take their ball eye off the ball. She glances at the fence, realizing that she's going to be close. The job of her catcher to get down the line to see, give her that line of sight. But she was right. That ball was close to the wall. It's a tough one to make, especially when you're not at home. Chop towards Moore. Had to hurry with the scoop. Had a little air under it, but still in time to get Vega. Catcher, After a three, brilliant day yesterday, Morris. does not have a hit today, but there's only five hits on the board for Duke. Torres hit by pitch the last time up. Also had a sack bunt early, first pitch swinging. Jacobson, the former Blue Devil, grabs it. Second straight inning that Duke goes down in order, but coming up, we can find out if Kurt had no hit Clemson. 
Cassidy Curd is a true freshman pitcher from Port St. Lucie, Florida, taking on one of the more potent offenses, not just in the ACC, but in the entire country. But she is no hitting Clemson. Val Cagle among the strikeout victims. She has eight of them as we go to the top of the seventh inning. Two hit batters, all that separates Curd from taking a perfect game into the seventh inning. And her first mission in this inning will be to take on Valerie Cagle, who has popped out and struck out. Playing first base today. Cagle, Jacobson, Logaleo do up. The winner gets Florida State tomorrow in the championship game. Clemson has only been no hit one time in their history. Last year against Notre Dame. And Alexis Holloway in the circle then. Cagle with a mighty swing and a miss. Well, and I love the aggression, uh, the aggression early in the at bat, knowing that Curd has left the ball bigger earlier. But now to lay off the rise and show plate discipline to extend this at bat. Nagel trying to bunt her way on and surprise everybody, but instead she falls to 0-2. What do you think about that strategy? Well, with a with corners playing deep, I actually like that drag bunt push, knowing that over there at third, Anna Gold was on her heels, expecting power off the bat. But with the popped up attempt, she now sits in a pretty big hole. Yeah. I don't like it on an 0-1. Hagel lays off the pitch out of the zone. In case you're wondering, there have been five no-hitters in the history of the ACC tournament. Last time, a couple of years ago, when Blake Nelliman of Georgia Tech no-hit Syracuse. One, two, Kegel sends it up in the air. Rittman gets out of the way, and it's caught by Gold for the Big first out of the seventh. On well, a game like this is so important for Clemson to be able to go back to the drawing board and talk about what needed to be different in this game. They have set themselves up with a really good RPI that gives them the chance to make it to the postseason without the automatic qualifying bid of the championship here in the ACC. But they're going to have to figure out how to manufacture runs down the stretch if they want to make a deep postseason run. Caroline Jacobson first pitch swinging. And a diving catch by Freelick, who came all the way from right field. Well, and that catch looked <laughs> really spectacular, but it it's, happens because she called off Amina Vega. And in terms of priority, an infielder has to give way when they hear the outfielder calling them off. So there, Freelick coming away with a really big second out. Jacobson, who graduated from Duke last year, playing her final season at Clemson, got robbed by Freelick. One out away from a no-hitter. Here's Logaleo. One of two Tigers who have been hit by a curd pitch today, also grounded out to short. One strike away. Logaleo, six hits in her last six games, but was 0 for 3 in the opener here in the championship. Clemson's last opportunity. Oh, 
that's not playable. Well, this is a big pitch, knowing that Clemson has been in the last two championship games for the ACC title. Duke did win it in 21, but they did not make it to the championship game last year. Clemson has been in the last two. Will this be the first time that the young Clemson squad does not make it to the last day? Another one-two on the way to Logaleo. Taken low, moving up the count at two apiece. Kurd has not walked a batter, just a couple of hit batters again. No hitter, just facing two over the minimum. Miss Young signaling in the pitchers to her freshman. On the ground, Vega. No hitter. Duke advances to the championship game. Cassidy Kurd cuts down Clemson. Cassidy Kurd absolutely brilliant in the circle, able to keep Clemson from getting any hits in this one. Two pitches, a little errant, two hit batters away from a perfect game for the freshman in the circle for Duke. What an outing to push them to the championship game tomorrow. They go to their second title game. Two years ago, they beat Clemson 1-0. They will take on defending champ Florida State. But boy, Cassidy Curd, who has been just ridiculous in her last five outings for Marissa Young, the former pitcher at Michigan, has got herself quite a freshman on her staff. And you saw the hug, Caroline Jacobson hugging her former head coach, Marissa Young. Jacobson again graduating from Duke last year, playing her last year at Clemson. No doubt that we will see Clemson in the post 